And with no one held accountable for the deaths of countless thousands on the beaches, there is a sense of impunity here on this island. My report starts as we left Colombo and headed north for Jaffna. Leaving Colombo Station, 6.30 a.m. No sooner have we left than the track becomes a pedestrian thoroughfare in our wake. Our eight-hour rattly, bumpy train journey, albeit first class, to the once forbidden north, passes handsome palms and wide open paddy fields with rich crops of rice. The first soldiers manifest themselves on a platform four hours into our journey. Three hours later, the lagoons announce the north. We're nearing Jaffna. How can so beautiful a country have spawned so vicious and wasteful a war? In 2009, the bitter 30-year civil war between the Tamil Tigers and the Sri Lankan government ended in a bloodbath. In the final weeks, the UN estimates that 40,000 civilians died as the Sri Lankan army relentlessly shelled remnants of the Tamil Tigers. Surrounded by tens of thousands of civilians, in the war's aftermath, countless videos, including this of a summary mass execution, were sent to Channel 4, which purported to be evidence of war crimes. Videos, the United Nations says, are evidence of multiple war crimes. Of the thousands who ended up in army hands, either by surrender or by capture, the majority have never been seen again. For six long years, families have lived in hope that they are still alive. But now, the Sri Lankan Prime Minister says they're dead, raising new concerns of previously unknown killings. Despite all this, we found Jaffna itself relaxed, busy, normal even, somehow confident for a moment in peace. There's been a change of government. But what are the chances of it resolving the continuing crisis of accountability for the war and reconciliation? I wouldn't even say 50-50. I, I believe that this is a great fudge. Nothing will actually happen. Um, that, if one is standing in uh, Jaffna, is a pretty serious statement. It is, and unfortunately that is the reality. One of the biggest unresolved crises here is that of people displaced by the war, now in camps like this one. Two years ago, I was with David Cameron in this very camp in Jaffna. People around him handing out shoes. He was amongst many promising that this issue affecting tens of thousands of people would soon be resolved. He said, when you wear these shoes, you just put on it and you just walk with the shoe to my lady within one week. That's 12 miles away. <laughs> yes. And now, two years on, has anything happened? Not, nothing will happen. This is the sanitary block that serves dozens of families. 40 people to a toilet. Some units so unusable, the doors are permanently locked. The desperation to go home is everywhere. Do you have hope from the new government here? <laughs> For some, like Anita, the pain is contorted by her missing 19-year-old daughter, Danusha, abducted during the war. She tells me, we don't know if she's alive or dead. And do you still hope or you have given up hope? Six years on, she cannot contain her grief. She ends, I'm still hoping my daughter will come. <laughs> Anita and everyone else in this camp comes from the fishing village of Mylidi. We've decided to try to reach it, find out why they cannot go home. Our progress is halted at an army checkpoint. No, you cannot enter. The military still has total control of vast tracts of land here. So we try another way. Amazingly, the army has built and runs a hotel complex close to Mylidu. Part army base, part entertainment. We try to spot Mylidu's harbour on the long end of our lens. It's whilst we were here that we learned that after the war the village was bulldozed. But it is what happened further along the coast that most cries out for answers still. This was the moment that more than 200,000 people 
had been urged to take cover in this government-declared no-fire zone. The UN estimates perhaps 40,000 people died. Some had been herded here by Tamil tigers and used as human shields. The killing fields are now open to the public. Shoes still litter the shoreline, some very small. The craters made by Sri Lankan army shells are still here, a square mile pockmarked with them, the remnants of human clothing still lying in many of them. It's taken us six years to get to this point, to this place where the two divisions of Sri Lankan military converged on the no-fire zone in which so many people were fired upon by the Sri Lankan military. Jayakamuri survived on the beach, but her son was hit by shell shrapnel. Of her four children, only her daughter remains. Two sons are dead, one disappeared. Arivoli was severely injured in the killing fields, had to be given a colostomy. She saved her husband by helping him to surrender to the army, but he has never been seen again. Last week, Sri Lanka's Prime Minister announced anyone who's missing is dead. Five days ago, the president stated he will never agree to international involvement in investigating what happened in these killing fields. Despite the rash of brash and brutal army memorials across this Tamil area, whose wording talks of the army's heroism, there have been small signals of change. This is one. It was once a huge army base. Last month, it was handed back to the people. Though every house was smashed and the undergrowth was out of control. But this is not yet resolution, as the Northern Region's chief minister points out. For that, there would have to be an internationally supported investigation into the war. Well, the international community wants it. We, the victims, would want it. But the government does not seem to be wanting it, and they are finding excuses. Because in recent times, the president has said abroad that uh, we can look after ourselves. It is because they could not look after themselves that we are having all these problems. So there is no question of an internal mechanism ever bringing justice to the people who have been affected. But as the moon rises and the sun sets across the Indian Ocean, there is a strong sense here that the UN and others will have to sustain their pressure if a long-term peace is ever to take hold here in what should be paradise.